has been during being a mother, being a wife, being an entrepreneur, growing a business is being okay with being myself, being okay with my no being no, being okay with how I said it, not overthinking. Sometimes I go back and I'm like, oh my God, I just said this like this. Why did I, you know, just over processing. Like, no, like, I don't care. I said it like that and that's it, eat it. Like, I don't care anymore. Right? So, like, that is the greatest lesson that I've learned so much and a lot of it's contribute to it, but being confident with who I am, how I do it, how I contemplated putting on heels. I was like, no, I'm leaving my sneakers on. You know, like, that, just be okay with that. And I love that, you know, um, it's funny because I think sometimes people will talk about, you know, you're, people will tell me I'm very authentic and I'm like, people never told me to be anything else. <laughs> I didn't realize, I, it, was, it was like the ignorance of not knowing, you know, a lot of spaces that I would walk into, I was the only Latina, I was the only person who looked like me or had my background. And so I didn't know I was supposed to be anything different, you know? I mean, I would try to emulate certain things, but I was also like, well, shit, this works for me, so I'm going to keep doing it. Um, so I, I have a couple questions for the whole panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to piggyback off what you said, I think you hit the nail on the head there where you kind of mentioned you were overanalyzing. I had that problem with myself when I first jumped into real estate uh, because people knew me from so many other things. They knew me from marketing, great, huge campaigns that have made impacts all over the city, but they didn't know me for selling houses. And although no one came up to me and said, what are you doing? In my mind, I heard everybody saying that. In my mind, I heard people like, why is she doing this? Why is she doing that? She's not this. Did she watch the Seven Sunset? What is she doing? You know, and it really kept me on the sideline for probably the first six months in my career. And I did not sell one house for six months which is crazy because I'm like, hey, I'm Stephanie Galloway and I'm doing, no, I did not sell a house for six months. Now, after that six months, you know, it's been on and hopping. But for that six months, I did not sell anything and I was in my own head. And it took me that whole six months to realize that the drawback wasn't that I wasn't good enough or that people didn't want to seek me out. It was that I was the one holding myself back and I had to let that go. So thank you for bringing that to me. Yeah. I didn't have my actual first event till just last weekend. It took me one year to really like get the gumption, you know, and then January, like we full fledged. So, absolutely, you know, we get in our own heads. Um, and I joke, I joke around about this all the time. It's funny because my husband is going to hear me say this for the first time. Um, there's like an entire industry that will sell you like mugs and t shirts that are like, Lord, ask, you can do it. Seize the day, you're the queen, yes girl, whatever. Ernesto does not have one t-shirt that's like, Ernesto, you can do it. Ernesto, you can go get the day, you can do they, they Men don't have that, right? They are like, they wake up like, I can jump off this roof and fly, sure, why couldn't I? You know, like, I, it's just, a, it's a very different, you know, I mean, it's funny because we've been seeing it in, you know, I see it in my nephews and nieces, right? Like. My, my nieces, my daughters will contemplate every little thing that they're doing, right? My nephews are just like, BAM! <laughs> like, why would you think you could jump off that? Like, why? You know, like they're, I mean, it's something that's not just in their DNA. I think it's the way that we talk to our kids. I think it's the things that, the messages that we see all the time. And so it's interesting how we, uh, we take that in and it shows up in these different ways in our life. So I wanna, I wanna flip it for just a second. I have a couple questions before we wrap up the panel. Um, one, we talked about financial literacy and we talked about building financial wealth. And I think it's funny because, especially in a world where we are all on Instagram every day, who starts out their day on the social media or TikTok or whatever, I mean, some of y'all are lying. I know you do. I know you do because you like some of my posts. That I posted in the morning. So, but you know, when you start off your day or before you go to bed, right? And you're seeing people with like, oh, they're on this vacation or they got this new thing or they're doing their new whatever. Um, let's talk about finances for just a second, like real talk. Like, what does building financial wealth mean to you? Like, where, what was your journey to get to that space with, you know, divulge as much as you feel comfortable with? But I just think it's important because I think that sometimes when people see, 
you were all asked to be here for a reason, right? And so when we can real, really be honest about our struggles, I think it, it makes it like okay for other people. I guess when I think about generational wealth, you know, I've had to learn trial by fire. You know, I had two parents that worked very hard and I don't think they knew anything about financial um, structure, independence, you know, they were just kind of winging it as well. They both came from very strong military families, um, so there was, you know, always a constant income that was good there, but I didn't get that relayed to me. But I think how City Council is moving now and how this community is moving now with the Financial Empowerment Center and all of these resources that help people start to understand what wealth is, that's important because you can give people opportunities all day. You can make more money in your job and get $20,000 more in this job, but if you don't know what you're doing with your money, it does not matter. So from a very young age, you need to start understanding money, understanding credit, understanding savings, you know, debt to income ratio. You have to be thoughtful about things that you're doing. And we all have this FOMO, we're all on Instagram. Let me tell you something, I'm on Instagram every day counting people's pockets. Like, how, I know I made more than you, how did you in Belize? You know, or I'm like, you know, oh, here's your down payment money for your house right there. You know, like, I'm, so it's important to not get caught up in all of that because number one, it's not real. It's a facade. People are only posting their highlights. Number two, just remove yourself from what people are doing and really think, what am I doing today that is going to benefit my grandchildren? You know better than you do better. So my husband and I, a lot of the work that we do is because we didn't, we didn't have those experiences or access to it or were afforded the opportunity to learn. And so we have a conference called the Ballers Conference, the Financial Literacy Experience, where we teach youth um, everything, the basics from um, banking, savings. We have different corporations come in and teach their kids how to open up bank accounts. We have um, scholarship or people who teach them about scholarship. Um, but literally when we're in the room, we're like soaking in all the information as well. Um, and when we are raising our children, the things that we didn't get in our households when we were growing up, we're literally fostering it into them, right? Um, whether it's basic, it, sometimes it's down to the basic things of, of, of study habits and discipline and reading, making sure that reading is a priority in our house. Um, though to me, that all speaks to generational wealth because of our habits that are being planted in my kids that weren't habits for me that I'm now having to learn as an adult. And so now my kids will be confident um, and they're also being raised by um, entrepreneurs. And so they're hearing conversations and they're hearing deals. They watched us finish a grant last night. They were spinning the chair. You know, they're hearing things that I didn't hear as a kid and they're hearing it at seven and four. And so I'm confident that as we are building our wealth and that we're positioning ourselves to be able to pass things down to them, they're out, we're breaking generational curses by also feeding them knowledge. And I think talking, being transparent with our kids about I mean, my parents never wanted to talk about money. Like, they felt like it was like this private thing. And so I think to my detriment, you know, because um, I just, it did not teach me the skills that I needed to know to like really empower myself and really understand money in the way that would help me as an adult. So I think that, you know, how we're having these conversations and having transparency. I feel like everything that we don't talk about that we like leave out in the dark, we're just missing an opportunity to like educate someone else or make people feel like things are comfortable and normal, right? Like, I think we all make jokes about like struggling, but like nobody really wants to talk about how they're struggling, right? Like really struggling. And so I think that those conversations are so important with starting them at that young age, I think is really important. So, right. If you don't start those conversations at a young age, your kids are gonna be 30 and 40 coming to you asking for money. So you need to nip it in the bud and be transparent. I really admire the conversations that you're having with your children. And I think it's important, even at four years old, that they do start absorbing and learning and hearing and seeing the struggles and seeing the strategies that are in place for their future and, for, and just for your happiness and sustainability you know, as a family. But if you don't start having those transparent conversations, they will come back to you, but in a way that is not gonna make you happy. Yes, so uh, in Motherful, we deal with a conversation a lot, which is um, just being worthy. Our, our, our moms just feeling worth that they can uh, receive all of the, all of the resources and um, blessings that the collective has. So um, um, 
we do um, talk to moms constantly and assure them you can take you can take three jugs of milk. It's fine. Like we we have a lot here, and then they're like, no, I, I want to save it for someone else. No, it's there for you. They just can't uh, really um, understand the abundance sometimes when they come to Motherful because it's just um, not. It's it's kind of different. It's a different environment. The um, collective. Um, community that we have and um, we definitely believe that um, the generational wealth um, it, inside of Motherful is when everyone is taken care of and no one is cast aside and um, this solution is not um, for an individual um, it is a collective solution uh, where many needs are met um, because we are a maternal gift economy inside of Motherful um, we um, what I want to say, um, um, we are working on different things inside of Motherful that supports this um, topic, which is our loan program. Um, we have a loan program that is no interest, so moms can um, get money and open a business or work on a new project or pay off uh, a loan. So we're definitely supporting that. We're also um, working really, really hard inside of um, the city to bring universal income. Um, it's a big conversation and we are on the forefront of creating that inside of the city. So we are talking about that as well, where moms will be able to get a stipend um, monthly that would that would boost them um, across the board for all moms, no matter what type of um, situation you're in um, financially. So that's uh, one thing we, we're doing too. Um, we also have a lot of literacy and uh, financial support um, programs for our moms. So um, those are some of the things that we're doing. And we also believe that um, the climate justice work that we do all the time um, is definitely supporting generational wealth. I mean, we cannot go on without clean water. Um, we cannot go on without um, all of these things that support our um, our Mother Earth. So those are really important to us. I think also that idea of, I think sometimes we, to me, we think about the context, like a lot of times I think we talk about like finances 101 or financial literacy or that sort of thing. and. Instead of talking about, I, I was the director of an organization called AM for many years, and we always talked about building your financial wealth because it was a mind shift for people of what does wealth even mean, right? Like, it's not being like Beyonce rich, it's like being able to pay your bills and take a vacation and not have to worry about money. I mean, I remember being a kid and just my parents constantly worrying about money and, and feeling that, that energy as a kid and being worried about it. And even though we always had our basic needs taken care of, I know for them. I saw that stress, you know, and, and I think that how we think about it and how we talk about it, especially with our kids and how we change culture around it, I think is so important. So um, I am going to wrap up our conversation today because I I know that we, I always believe in leaving people wanting more, right? Um, so I want to thank you all for being on the panel today. Uh, there